I'm Laura Ingram, and this is the Ingram Angle in Washington tonight. The last 24 hours have revealed so much about the left's clubhouse. No divergent ideas are allowed, and sometimes they're pretty viciously intolerant of any political differences, and then end up launching deeply personal and destructive attacks against anyone who violate, violates their orthodoxy. Most recently, someone like a Kanye West or Justice Brett Kavanaugh. They felt their scorn. Tonight, as we barrel toward the midterms, we'll reveal the latest attacks and the possible political fallout. Tucker Carlson, Raymond Arroyo, Corey Lewandowski, Howie Kurtz, all here and many more. But first, the odious Kanye West pylon. The outrageous attacks on Kanye West continue as the left pulls its hair out over this meeting that Kanye had yesterday with President Trump. Now, check this out. MSNBC guest Mer Michael Eric Dyson, you've seen him a lot on, on cable news. He pretty much called Kanye just too stupid to talk to the president on any issues regarding race and trying to just give the president cover on what he really is, I guess, just a white nationalist. Watch. We, as African-American people, cannot stand idly by while you give cover to a man who has proved to be a white supremacist who has no interest in African-American people. This is such a blitzkrieg of blathering ignorance. Kanye, please cease the interventions uh, through media of trying to engage issues about which you don't have sophisticated comprehension and knowledge. Ooh, sophisticated knowledge like Beyonce and Jay-Z were in the Obama White House. All right, meanwhile, Donna Brazile is accusing Kanye of setting African-Americans back 155 years. Look at that. Joining me now, Pastor Daryl Scott, CEO of the National Diversity Coalition for Trump, Leo Terrell, civil rights attorney Jeffrey Lord, who served in the Reagan administration and is a contributing editor to the American Spectator, and with me in studio, Garland Nixon, radio talk show host and political analyst. All right, guys, great to have you all on. Uh, thanks for joining me. And now, Leo, let me start with you. I just have to go oh, back me, okay. to what uh, Michael Eric Dyson said. White supremacy by ventriloquism? Now, to me, Lord, when I hear that, yeah. Leo, I mean, set aside politics, if a conservative said that about an African-American, you know, celebrity who was liberal, who was showing up with Obama or Clinton or anyone, uh, anyone on the left for that matter, there would be hell to pay. But because Kanye's in the Oval with the president, it's okay to call it a minstrel show, call him stupid, call him insane, and now he's just a, a dummy with uh, Donald Trump operating his uh, his dummy body. H how could you how could you think that that was a good thing? Well, let me just be very clear. I'm not going to uh, condone the personal attacks by by Dyson, but I will simply say this. I was embarrassed when I saw Kanye West speak yesterday. It was a photo opportunity for Trump. Why was I embarrassed, Laura? Because I, I challenge anyone on this panel to say that the the elimination of the 13th Amendment is a good idea, that stop and frisk is it. Kanye West does not have the skill set to talk about the 13th Amendment, which he did yesterday, stop and fritz, which does not exist. And Kanye West is the guy who said that George Bush hates black people. Let me be very clear. He's not a Condoleezza Rice. He's not a Colin Powell. And you know Michael Steele. Condoleezza, uh, uh, Kanye West does not have the skill set to talk about any of those subjects. And I challenge anyone on this panel to tell me they support the idea of eliminating the 13th Amendment. Please, tell me if that's not wacko. Well, I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not getting you on the 13th Amendment. I'm not sure he ever said it in those terms, but... That's what Kanye um, West said. It should be eliminated. Past, okay, let's go to Pastor Scott. Pastor Scott, Kanye West is a very unconventional figure. Let's just put it that way. I mean, his music is... Oh, it's, it's very popular. He's one of the top, you know, rap artists in the world. Uh, he speaks to a certain, you know, segment of the population. Again, very wealthy, incredible entrepreneur. It's not my cup of tea. But he comes out and he says a few things about fatherhood and people who lack masculine role models. I love this president. I want him be, to be successful. And suddenly he becomes, oh, my God, he is the KKK. I thought the, the reaction to him 
was just way over the top, and I was wondering why. What are your well, thoughts? Kanye West critics and detractors, they have a problem with how he said what he said and who he said it to. His content, when you dissect the content of what he said, what did he say that was so wrong? Even when my brother is talking about his abolishment of the 13th Amendment, there's a component in the 13th Amendment that legalizes slavery for criminals, with blacks being disproportionately You're incarcerated. Wrong. What when You're wrong. blacks being hey man, I didn't interrupt you. Calm down. With blacks You're being wrong. disproportionately incarcerated. He's saying that. And I had a brother-in-law that served years in prison, and he said it's turning into institutionalized slavery. They don't like the fact that Kanye West is his own man, and whatever you say he's not qualified to speak on, he's qualified to have his own opinion. You don't know what you're talking about, the 13th Amendment. You're Rice. wrong. He doesn't try to be anybody else but a Kanye West. What about stopping Fritz? And you know Fritz? what? I don't like what about all the people Fritz? that criticize the fact that he went yeah. up there and all you're the people that— You're ignoring what he said. Didn't, didn't, all the people that, that, that refused an opportunity to go themselves. Kanye West was there unfiltered, and the president He's allowed not him to qualified. be unfiltered. And any He's of these okay, kids okay. want to sit just out like there, you. they don't okay, have the go stones Garland, to go up and sit down with him and talk to himself. Then you can't stand outside and throw rocks. Grow okay. a pair and go up there and talk to him yourself. Okay, I want to I want to go to Garland here because I actually think this is an interesting moment, and it's an interesting moment because the the conversation about race in America to me is stuck. It's not, it's not moving beyond where it is right now. And again, Kanye is kind of this unconventional guy. He's, he's an entrepreneur. He's a businessman. He's a rapper. He, he starts small businesses. He's interested in technology. I don't know him. I don't know really much about him. But what it, to me and what he's saying is, let me think for myself. Don't denounce me because I actually like this guy who's president and want, want to make him successful. And I think to myself, why would the liberals be against that? Because everyone's for freedom of thought, be who you want to be, express who you want to be. So why are liberals so exercised about one guy? You've got the whole celebrity community on your side. One guy who says he likes Trump. I think there's two dynamics going on here. The first one, and let's be real, let, let's be honest about this. Within the black voting uh, bloc, Donald Trump is absolutely loathed. And that, 36 percent approval is not uh, bad. I'll tell you what. You, 36 percent approval let, yesterday let, by Rasmussen. Let, let, let's, let's talk That's about. That's double it was last year. Let's talk about. You guys are worried about let's that, aren't you? Let's talk about and the second or third week. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Hold I'm on, saying, let him speak. I understand those numbers. Let's talk about the second or third week of November and see if those numbers hold up, which they're which they they in 2016, but, but I'll tell you two, that much. Number two, <laughs> and that's the, that you've got Kanye West, a guy with, and let's be honest, he does have a, handle, a, a, a history of some, mental, of some mental issues and some outrageous statements. A guy who's worth 350 to 400 million dollars. He does not speak for the black community. If Donald Who Trump, does? if Donald Trump and was to ask me to speak with him tomorrow. I would, but I would expect to be vilified because I know the black community hates him so bad that I better be ready to. I'd be ready okay, to Garland, speak hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, Garland, hold on, hold on, guys, hold on. Do you think when you say the black community hates him so yes. bad, how does that advance the black community? To say I don't, that. See, I don't think it advanced the black community, but let me tell you something about the history of the black community in politics. Because they didn't think the that. The they the didn't Democratic think that. Party. Wait a second. Wait. They didn't think that five years ago. He was a featured uh, guest and celebrity on music videos and movies. Mm -hmm. He was revered by the entertainment industry, the sports in uh, industry. But suddenly Donald Trump is running the country. We got the lowest unemployment in 49 years for the country, historically low unemployment for African Americans. Still need work to do, but it's making some progress. So when you say they hate Donald it it just, there's something that's not adding up here, Garland. I'm honestly trying to make progress here, not just doing a talking point. There seems to be a bridge that can be built between what the president wants to accomplish for America and African Americans. Do you think so? Absolutely not. Not? Let me tell you why. President reform, what he's no, doing? Forget it. Forget when, it. When, in the black okay. community, when they saw a bunch of guys in Charlottesville with Nazi flags okay. and Donald Trump hats on, yeah. that was it. There's no coming okay. back from that. Okay. Only, no coming back. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Because he, the he only, controlled the Charlottesville. Only, Let's go to Jeffrey only, Lord. Jeffrey, you haven't spoken yet. Jeffrey Lord, go ahead. Laura, you hit it exactly on the head. Uh, Kanye West walked off the liberal plantation, and that's something that is not supposed to be done, and now they're coming from them. Uh, Laura, I'm going to read you a line which I know you recognize well, since it was said by Justice Clarence Thomas, for whom you uh, clerked. And the line is, 
that what he was put through, what Justice Thomas was put through, was a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks who in any way deigned to think for themselves, to do for themselves, to have different ideas. That is exactly what does that have to do with Kanye West? Here. That is so irrelevant. Kanye, what you just Kanye said, West, and you know, hold on, Leo. Kanye Leo, just hold on, sweetie. Kanye West. Kanye West said the other day, "I'm an American." He is an American. He has every right to think whatever he chooses to think, and he should not be come for and not have people going after him like this and this disgraceful performance. I mean, this is disgusting. Disgusting yes, what they're he, doing. He didn't know what he was talking and, about. And he, and he is, I'll tell you, elimination. He, he is, he, he is he an American he hero about. for having the guts Shame to stand you. up and say what he believes. I and want to play. Laura, 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 Laura Ingram. Laura Ingram has done a beautiful job of talking about Kanye has a right. No one's questioned that. But Laura Ingram, you know as well as I do as a lawyer, what he came out of his mouth, the content made no okay, sense. Okay, I have a question that for you, Leo. Leo, Leo, no Leo, I have a question for you. you. When LeBron James comes out yes, and says, as he did some months back, that you know Donald Trump. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. It's not an exact quote, but he doesn't. You know, he doesn't care about people. Um, and he was, it was featured everywhere. I mean, LeBron James is an amazing person, incredible athlete. But I don't know how much he studies politics. Maybe he studies a lot. Maybe he doesn't. But, like, you know, do you throw out a few black, you know, a few uh, blankety blank, you know, lines about Trump, and suddenly you're a hero yes. in the liberal sports world? And then if you criticize LeBron James, oh my God, you can't criticize LeBron James. But Kanye West right. does it in the Oval Office, and suddenly it's, you don't know anything. Well, does Kanye West know any less than LeBron James knows uh, about politics? Uh, okay. Probably great, not. Great All I'm saying is probably not. They're probably about the same because it's not their, It's not like I don't know anything about basketball. I don't know anything about rap music. That's okay, What's but they have hey, a right hey, to speak out. Hey, hey, great point, great point Laura. You make, you, make a, you, make, you make a good point about LeBron James and Kanye West. The point here is everyone in this panel... You heard the content of the 13th Amendment and stop and frisk. Everyone on this panel knows there is no stop and frisk in this country, and that came out of Kanye West's mouth. And what's scary about no, it no, is no. he what has he's a saying platform there. No, no, I understand what you're saying. Leo, you're monopolizing the panel, and I love that yeah, you because you're so, you have so much emotion. But there is, <laughs> there, is, the there is a push to bring back stop and frisk because people think, including, I think, Rudy Giuliani, that it actually was successful in stopping crime. He was coming out and saying, we don't want stop and frisk. So he was actually acting, I think, in a proactive way for what he happens to believe. I want to go, though, to Pastor Scott. Pastor, again, I think there is an enormous amount of progress that can be made on race relations. And I think Listen. it's going to probably come from new people. It's not going to come from probably anyone on this panel. It's going to come from new thinkers, people from different walks of life. And it's, it's, it's going to bust the old stereotypes. I don't know if it's Kanye West. Maybe it's not. But I don't, I don't like the idea of casting off people as deplorables or he's stupid or he's mental or he's... I don't know. Black, he's a person. You know, listen, just judge him for what he is. Lord, the black community doesn't hate Trump. The black media hates Trump. The black media is the mouthpiece for the Democratic Party that hates Trump. The black man on the street, they don't hate Trump. They like Trump's policies. They like the fact that under you don't speak for the black people. Time low, you don't speak they, for the black people. No you one sure does. Okay, Leo, Leo, tell you what, Leo, take you, I, give it a rest. Nobody speaks for anyone. We're speaking for I, ourselves. Go ahead. I talked to some guys earlier from Chicago. The guys on the street in Chicago appreciate Kanye West standing up for them, speaking up for Larry Hoover, speaking up for other people and, and, and conditions in Chicago and saying we want to make those conditions better. You guys are upset because he's not allowing himself to be a puppet for the Democratic you guys, Party. Right. If he said you these guys, exact same right. things guys. about a black league, you, you and whoever shame else you, you speak shame for. Shame on you. That's shame what I'm saying you. about. Shame on you. I you guys, shame, on you. shame on you. I want to go to Garland. Okay, guys, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. black stuff, but you don't mind vilifying or crucifying another black man on television? You don't mind doing that? You're a hypocrite. Shame on you. All right, let's go to Don Lemon. Guys, I want to... Okay, hold on. I want to go to Don Lemon. This is something he said that had a lot of heads turning uh, and involved the phrase minstrel show in Kanye. Let's watch. I actually feel bad for him. What I saw was a minstrel show today. Him in front of all of these white people, mostly white people, embarrassing himself and embarrassing Americans, but mostly African Americans, because every, every one of them is sitting either at home or with their phones watching this 
cringing. I couldn't even watch it. Okay, this is um, uh, from someone who was doing uh, some type of shot on New Year's Eve and the cameras. Speculated that a black hole could have swallowed up a Malaysian airliner. Talking about something. I, mean, I actually like Don Lemon. I think he's, he's like a nice guy. But again, it's it's the pejorative. It's not dealing with any of the substantive issues that are actually on the table. The lack of father figures. How African American kids and all kids without father figures gravitate toward others who can give them guidance. That racism as a weapon instead of racism as something we want to defeat and then move beyond. So I, I was actually disappointed with Don Lemon on the minstrel show comment because certainly no conservative could have ever said that. Garland. Certainly no, not. But Don, Don hold on, hold on. on. Let Garland shows. speak, please. Yeah, but certainly. Hold on. No. He uh, ought to but, know about minstrel shows. Yeah. <laughs> but the issue we're, we're, we're <laughs> looking at here, there, is a lot, there are a lot of people. Like, me, I kind of cringe. On there hold on, guys. Garland speaking. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, I kind of cringe because the thing about it is it's the person. I like Kanye West. I don't dislike him. I have nothing against him. But, you know, you remember the Taylor Swift issue. You never know what he's going to say. And you're always, I'm always on the edge waiting to cringe when he says, he's in the alternate universes and things. Let's face it, he's not the right spokesman. And now it appears that conservatives are holding up this guy I'm who's not. not the best spokesman as though he's like speaking for no, all the wonderful things I actually things don't that think I don't Trump think is doing for black yeah, I don't think anyone speaks for any one big group when Jesse Jackson comes out and he's, he's represented as he represents all black right. people I always have people on my radio show who say I, you know Jesse Jackson's an interesting guy he was with MLK he doesn't speak for me so anyone who says they and speak Garland, for Garland X doesn't people, speak for me either Garland doesn't yeah. speak for me I get it. So, so everybody's speaking for himself or herself. I understand that. All I'm saying, and I think all, all of us are trying to get to the point where individuals of any color can speak their mind and have their ideas exactly. judged for what they are. But the, but the question for what is, they are. The question is, is Kanye a credible <laughs> spokesperson for the issues of black America? And I think most black Americans are looking at it saying, no, he hit on a couple of issues that I would he, say, he yeah, I agree with Is LeBron that. James? But it was, a, it was muddled. Is LeBron James? Kanye was, well, no, but he didn't Kanye say was. much. Okay, Kanye okay well, LeBron right, James campaigned for Hillary to do Clinton. speak for himself. He can speak for himself he and he can, give, he can give his truth. Kanye yeah, everyone has guys, truth. guys. Everyone has their truth. I'm, and I'm not, I'm not putting down LeBron James. He has a right to speak out and campaign for everyone he wants. But all I'm saying is, when a, when a, one of the best, if not the best, basketball player on earth speaks and does a rally for Hillary, nobody's saying, well, what's his expertise? Suddenly they're saying Kanye has no expertise. Well, versus whom? I, I don't know. I just think we gotta, we gotta be clear on, you know, what we're talking about here and who's representing what group. I think the more voices, the better. That's my view. Judge everybody for their opinions, whatever they are, and I think it's a good thing. And I value all my opinions tonight, every one of you. All right, guys, for more <laughs> insight into the mind of President Trump and the conservative populism that drives him, make sure to pick up a copy of my new book in paperback now, Busting the Barricades, What I Saw at the Populist Revolt. It's in bookstores everywhere and coming up. Cable news hosts, particularly some at CNN, have donned their psychiatry caps to diagnose Kanye as, well, totally crazy. Up next, one of the country's preeminent psychology professors is here to tell us why that language might be damaging. Don't go away. You know what's not okay? Using someone's mental health struggles as a weapon when you attack them for, you know, basically you don't have a, an argument against them, so you just say they're nuts. Well, of course, that's what they're doing with Kanye West. His political views, not all that important, but you just hurl insults at him to try to demonize him. It's simply disgusting. This was an embarrassment. Kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave. Not only was this a crazy conversation for this White House, this is the kind of conversation that would typically be held between people wearing hospital bracelets. I don't know if he's open to help, but I just feel like this is a public cry for help, and he's not getting any I, I, help. I, I, there was a ranting lunatic in the Oval Office today. Kanye, back away from the cameras, go get some help, and then come back and make your case. Get help? Dr. Lemon, why are you stigmatizing people who battle mental health issues? How dare you try to minimize what Kanye is saying because he's open about some of the mental health issues he's had? I think you owe Kanye and everyone else dealing with these struggles an apology, and you need to do better. Don Lemon's actually a good guy. He knows better. Joining me now is Patrick Corrigan, psychology professor and author of the book, The Stigma 
effect. All right, Professor. Now, how deleterious is it for anyone in the media, left wing, right wing, to exploit another person's medical history as was done just over the past 24 hours regarding Kanye West? Reducing somebody's conversation to illegitimacy by saying they're mentally ill is in the same category as a stigma related to racism, sexism, homophobia. It's saying that your message doesn't count because once upon a time you had experience with bipolar disorder or other illness. Um, the stigma of mental illness is not trivial. People labeled with mental illness are unable to get jobs, live independently, get good health care, and it's all because messages like this perpetuate them as being different, worse than we are. And Professor, it, it seems like it would deter people from getting counseling. Let's say they lost a parent, went through a difficult time. If they know later on, they're going to be described as one of those people who got help. And I, I, as someone who knows a lot of people over the years who've gone through, especially with like death of children, death of parent, gone through incredibly difficult periods of time, I mean, we want to encourage people to, to be able to talk to others, to get help. And to me, in this case, it's the, it's, it's mostly liberals, sadly, in this situation, who are demonizing someone just because, I guess, they're in the Oval Office with Trump and throwing in the crazy town deal as a way to demonize him and dismiss him. Anytime you throw in the word crazy, whether it comes from the left or it comes to the right, it undermines the opportunities of people who struggle with mental illness. And, and by the way, that's a lot of people. Um, epidemiology suggests it could be one out of five people have a serious mental illness. The stigma fundamentally comes from the label. I'm seeing somebody come out of the psychiatrist's office and they know they must be nuts or coming out of the counselor's office and they must be crazy. And so they're going to avoid those kind of places so they don't get those kind of labels. And they're not going to get the kind of treatment you were just talking about that we know really will work. Professor, thank you so much for your insight. And Obama's White House, by the way, was a revolving door for celebrities. Do you remember the policy summit he had with rappers Common, Buster Rhymes, and Ludacris about criminal justice reform? Well, you probably don't because the left-wing media didn't freak out over it like they did when one guy goes into the Oval Office yesterday, Kanye West. Joining us now with Reaction, double standard extraordinaire here, of course. Howie Kurtz, Howie, of course, uh, Media Buzz, great show on the weekends on Fox. Howie, this is wild, because I remember when Kanye came and he did his poetry slam at the White House, and, I mean, I, I mean, truth be told, I actually kind of, you know, laughed at it, because I thought the poem was really bad that he did on stage. But Obama was just really at ease with celebrities, and obviously they loved him. No one cared. Obama's celebrities, Obama's rappers, they were, they had the approved ideology, so it was okay. The media kind of celebrated it. Look. What Kanye did in the Oval Office, it is fine for critics to say it was weird, it was strange, it was bizarre. Even Donald Trump seemed kind of speechless for a moment. But the brutal nature of some of this criticism as a result is clearly driven by ideology. Um, when Kanye West was talking about George Bush doesn't care about black people, uh, oh, a lot of I these criticized liberals, him for that. Yeah, but a lot of these liberals said, oh, he's a really cool dude. And now, because he's wearing the red hat and he's embracing Donald Trump, he must be loco. What are the chances, like, next week he'll be wearing, like, a Cory Booker hat? Like, is there any <laughs> chance of that whatsoever? All right, Jackie Spire, I want to play this for you, Howie. Um, Congresswoman from California said this about, um, well, Kanye and his mental health. It was a combination of stream of consciousness. I felt like I was sitting in on a psychiatric visit and a commercial for Donald Trump. Uh, it wasn't newsworthy, certainly, but uh, I would suggest that the, the president uh, should maybe uh, curtail these kinds of engagements. Well, Howie, 36 percent approval of Rasmussen among African Americans. That's double from last year, same poll. It seems like they're more worried about Con the Kanye effect on the midterm elections than they are about Kanye's mental health. Well, here we see the mental health issue being brought up again. And, you know, in addition to the congresswoman, it seems like the harshest criticism is coming from other African Americans. You played Don Lemon dragging yeah. Kanye's late mother into it. CNN contributor Tara Setmeyer said he was a token Negro. I haven't heard that phrase 
in, in decades. Decades, And literally. so what, it's rooted in the notion that if a black person, black people uh, who are for somebody like Donald Trump, they can't know what they're talking about. They're completely misinformed. They're, they have serious issues and all of that. And that, you know, they no longer have a monopoly. And so the piling on here against Kanye West, who's an entertaining guy, who, as you say, probably don't know all that much about politics. Well, but more so than who, he, Matt Damon? Uh, yeah, and he went there to talk about actually a serious issue, like his wife Kim Kardashian did. So I, the freak out is just so over the top that I think it can only be uh, written off as ideological opposition to a guy who thinks a little differently. We'll be watching Media Buzz this weekend, Howie. Thanks so much for Great being with you. us. And the PC language police strike again. Whoopi Goldberg reveals a he too moment. Those are just some of the topics ahead on Friday Follies with Raymond Arroyo. Plus, Hillary Clinton loses her security clearance. Oh, I'll tell you more coming up. Hey, that means it's time for... Oh, Friday Folly, political correctness is now messing with our language. And did Whoopi Goldberg just admit her own he too moment? For all the details, we're joined by Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor, best-selling author, Will Wilder series. Raymond, I hope you can do this without injuring yourself. I'll, I will try. Okay. Uh, will try. What am I now not allowed to say? What words well, can I not say? This PC week, police. we came across this article in a San Francisco periodical where the term Indian summer may not be used anymore because what? it's in political correct thought. You shouldn't use Indian summer. Oh, right. They're the, putting up the words too I fast. know. Well, we'll get to those in a second. But the problem Take is those this. Down. Indian summer may have its origins in cargo ships traveling the Indian Ocean. It may have nothing to do with what? Native Americans. We don't know the exact origins okay, of that. Okay, so term. what other words? There are other words now we may you not can use put them up. any longer. Okay. Words like Indian summer, sitting up, Indian style. Off the reservation. Don't say off the reservation, Ingram. Here we go. Uh, black ball. Oh, black That's ball. That's a no-no. I use that today. Whitewash. I use that. Don't today. use whitewash. You offend me. Okay. Uh, inmates running the asylum. I used that yesterday. And one we angle. talked about earlier. Freshman. I guess you can't use freshman anymore. You can't just say first year. You can't say right, freshman because you're discriminating against women. Here's a, there was a poll. I thought it was done. fresh. Like don't be fresh, man. Okay, go ahead. Please. There was a, there's a new poll yeah. by a group called More in Common. They found 80% of people, 80% found political correctness a problem and the think worst. it's a problem. But when you break it down by race, 79% of whites, 82% of Asians, 87% of Hispanics, and 75% of African Americans think political correctness is a problem. But then it said hate speech a problem. Well, that's a secondary thing. Yeah, 82% no, of people thought it was hate speech. All right, let's that's talk about Neil Patrick Harris. Well, wait, wait. Speaking on. of the PC police, The View had a moment that few caught the other day. Actor Neil Patrick Harris revealed he did his first film with Whoopi Goldberg, and then he said this. Listen closely. You know, I did my first movie ever with uh, with Whoopi Goldberg, a movie called Clara's Heart, oh, and we worked heart. together on that. Yeah. Yeah. He told me. But, yeah. She told me, I was, what, 15, 16 years old, mm -hmm. she told me on my last day of shooting that 10 years, in 10 years' time, she was going to have sex with me. <laughs> I might have. In those days, you could actually have some fun like that. You can't do that now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get yeah. Very I was not offended. Now. I'm looking forward to it. Have some fun like that. Imagine. Imagine if a young female actress got up and said some Academy Award winning director had told her when she was 15 that he was, would have sex with her in a few years. The view would be asking for that right. guy's head right and promising he'd never work again. But there apparently is one rule book for Hollywood and one rule book for everybody else. Well, it's just like everyone was kind of like. Ho hum. Cat oh. got her tongue for a few seconds. I, I there, didn't though. notice that. I All didn't right. notice that. And James Gunn, you remember we did this story several weeks ago in July. James Gunn was the director of uh, the Marvel, the big Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. They ended up slicing his contract, canceling his involvement, and they moved him to DC Comics now. He's directing the Suicide Squad. This is a guy who wrote these pedophilic like tweets. They fire him. They rehire him in a matter of months. Okay, so it's a different standard. Where's the mercy for Rosie? All right, real quick, Connors versus Last Man Standing. Where are we on that? Last, real quick. Last Man Standing is the biggest breakout hit Fox has seen in seven years Tim. for their comedies. Fox Network. Tim Allen's show, of course, a conservative show that was bounced off of ABC. Okay? It beat the Murphy Brown premiere by a million viewers. And the, you know how they pushed that. Yeah. Then, of course, what happened next was it beat Will and Grace this week. The Connors... 
is meanwhile in, in full oh, panic Oh, without Roseanne, what a shock. Yeah. Well, the, you predicted this. Well, Raymond predicted Connors without Roseanne. I say three or four episodes, and it's canceled, and executives are telling the Daily Mail they think they may have fired Roseanne too early. Oh, they you think? I mean, they had a hit show, and they blew it. That's all I can say. Raymond, fantastic. As always... Let me push it. Over. Hey! Okay. Just hours after the GOP releases an ad comparing the left to an unhinged mob, they're proven right. Vandals defacing a New York Republican club in the middle of the night. That's next. Plus, Tucker Carlson's here to reveal Kanye's important message about men in modern society. Stay with us. You know what's not okay? Using someone's mental health struggles as a weapon when you attack them for, you know, basically you don't have a, an argument against them, so you just say they're nuts. Well, of course, that's what they're doing with Kanye West. His political views, not all that important, but you just hurl insults at him to try to demonize him. It's simply disgusting. This was an embarrassment. Kanye's mother is rolling over in her grave. Not only was this a crazy conversation for this White House, this is the kind of conversation that would typically be held between people wearing hospital bracelets. I don't know if he's open to help, but I just feel like this is a public cry for help, and he's not getting any I help. I there was a ranting lunatic in the Oval Office today. Kanye, back away from the cameras, go get some help, and then come back and make your case. Get help? Dr. Lemon, why are you stigmatizing people who battle mental health issues? How dare you try to minimize what Kanye is saying because he's open about some of the mental health issues he's had? I think you owe Kanye and everyone else dealing with these struggles an apology, and you need to do better. Don Lemon's actually a good guy. He knows better. Joining me now is Patrick Corrigan, psychology professor and author of the book, The Stigma Effect. All right, Professor, now how deleterious is it for anyone in the media, left wing, right wing, to exploit another person's medical history, as was done just over the past 24 hours regarding Kanye West. Reducing somebody's conversation to illegitimacy by saying they're mentally ill is in the same category as a stigma related to racism, sexism, homophobia. It's saying that your message doesn't count because once upon a time you had experience with bipolar disorder or other illness. Um, the stigma of mental illness is not trivial. People labeled with mental illness are unable to get jobs, live independently, get good health care, and it's all because messages like this perpetuate them as being different, worse than we are. And Professor, it, it seems like it would deter people from getting counseling. Let's say they lost a parent went through a difficult time, if they know later on they're going to be described as one of those people who got help. And I, I, as someone who knows a lot of people over the years who've gone through, especially with like death of children, death of parent, gone through incredibly difficult periods of time, I mean, we want to encourage people to, to be able to talk to others, to get help. And to me, in this case, it's the, it's, it's mostly liberal, sadly, in this situation, who are demonizing someone just because, I guess, they're in the Oval Office with Trump and throwing in the crazy town deal as a way to demonize him and dismiss him. Anytime you throw in the word crazy, whether it comes from the left or it comes to the right, it undermines the opportunities of people who struggle with mental illness. And, and by the way, that's a lot of people. Um, epidemiology suggests it could be one out of five people have a serious mental illness. The stigma fundamentally comes from the label. I'm seeing somebody come out of the psychiatrist's office and they know they must be nuts, or coming out of the counselor's office and they must be crazy. And so they're going to avoid those kind of places so they don't get those kind of labels. And they're not going to get the kind of treatment you were just talking about that we know really will work. Professor, thank you so much for your insight. And Obama's White House, by the way, was a revolving door for celebrities. Do you remember the policy summit he had with rappers Common, Buster Rhymes, and Ludacris about criminal justice reform? Well, you probably don't, because the left-wing media didn't freak out over it like they did when one guy goes into the Oval Office yesterday, Kanye West, joining us now with Reaction, double standard extraordinaire here, of course. Howie Kurtz, Howie, of course, uh, Media Buzz, great show on the weekends on Fox. 
how we, this is wild because I remember when Kanye came and he did his poetry slam at the White House. And I mean, I, I mean, truth be told, I actually kind of, you know, laughed at it because I thought the poem was really bad that he did on stage. But Obama was just really at ease with celebrities, and obviously they loved him. No one cared. Obama's celebrities, Obama's rappers, they were, they had the approved ideology, so it was okay. The media kind of celebrated it. Look, what Kanye did in the Oval Office, it is fine for critics to say it was weird, it was strange, it was bizarre. Even Donald Trump seemed kind of speechless for a moment. But the brutal nature of some of this criticism as a result is clearly driven by ideology. Um, when Kanye West was talking about George Bush doesn't care about black people, uh, oh, a lot of I these criticized liberals, him for that. Yeah, but a lot of these liberals said, oh, he's a really cool dude. And now, because he's wearing the red hat and he's embracing Donald Trump, he must be loco. What are the chances, like, next week he'll be wearing, like, a Cory Booker hat? Like, is there any <laughs> chance of that whatsoever? All right, Jackie Spire, I want to play this for you, Howie. Um, Congresswoman from California said this about, um, well, Kanye and his mental health. It was a combination of stream of consciousness. I felt like I was sitting in on a psychiatric visit and a commercial for Donald Trump. Uh, it wasn't newsworthy, certainly, but uh, I would suggest that the, the president uh, should maybe uh, curtail these kinds of engagements. Well, Howie, 36 percent approval of Rasmussen among African Americans. That's double from last year, same poll. It seems like they're more worried about con the Kanye effect on the midterm elections than they are about Kanye's mental health. Well, here we see the mental health issue being brought up again. And, you know, in addition to the congresswoman, it seems like the harshest criticism is coming from other African Americans. You played Don Lemon dragging yep. Kanye's late mother into it. CNN contributor Tara Setmeyer said he was a token Negro. I haven't heard that phrase in, in decades. Decades, and literally. And so well, it's rooted in the notion that if a black person, black people uh, who are for somebody like Donald Trump, they can't know what they're talking about. They're completely misinformed. They're, they have serious issues and all of that. And that, you know, they no longer have a monopoly. And so the piling on here against Kanye West, who's an entertaining guy, who, as you say, probably don't know all that much about politics. Well, but more so than who? He, Matt Damon? Uh, yeah, and he went there to talk about actually a serious issue, like his wife Kim Kardashian did. So I, the freakout is just so over the top that I think it can only be uh, written off as ideological opposition to a guy who thinks a little differently. We'll be watching Media Buzz this weekend, Howie. Thanks so much for Great being with you. us. And the PC language police strike again. Whoopi Goldberg reveals a He Too moment. Those are just some of the topics ahead on Friday Follies with Raymond Arroyo. Plus, Hillary Clinton loses her security clearance. Oh, I'll tell you more coming up. Hey, that means it's time for... Oh, Friday Follies. Political correctness is now messing with our language. And did Whoopi Goldberg just admit her own he too moment? For all the details, we're joined by Raymond Arroyo, Fox News contributor, best selling author, Will Wilder series. Raymond, I hope you can do this without injuring yourself. I'll, I will try. Okay. Uh, will try. What am I now not allowed to say? What words well, can I not say? This PC week, police. We came across this article in a San Francisco periodical where the term Indian summer may not be used anymore because what? it's in political correct thought. You shouldn't use Indian summer. Oh, right. They're the, putting up the words too I fast. know. Well, we'll get to those in a second. But the problem Take is those this. Down. Indian summer may have its origins in cargo ships traveling the Indian Ocean. It may have nothing to do with what? Native Americans. We don't know the exact origins okay, of that. Okay, so term. what other words? There are other words now we may you not can use put them up. any longer. Okay. Words like Indian summer, sitting up, Indian the style. Off the reservation. Don't say off the reservation, Ingram. Here we go. Uh, black ball. Oh, black That's ball. That's a no-no. I use that today. Whitewash. I use that. Don't today. use whitewash. You offend me. Okay. Uh, inmates running the asylum. I used that yesterday. And one we angle. talked about earlier. Freshman. I guess you can't use freshman anymore. You can't have to say first year. You can't say right, freshman because you're discriminating against women. Here's a, there was a poll. I thought it was done. fresh. Like don't be fresh, man. Okay, go ahead. Oh, please. There was a, there's a new poll yeah. by a group called More in Common. They found 80% of people, 80% found political correctness a problem and the think worst. it's a problem. But when you break it down by race, 79% of whites, 82% of Asians, 87% of Hispanics, and 75% of African Americans think political correctness is a problem. But then it said hate speech a problem. Well, that's a secondary thing. Yeah, 82% yeah, of vote. people thought it was hate speech. All right, let's that's talk about right. Neil Patrick Harris. Well, wait, wait. Speaking on. of the PC police, The View had a moment that few caught the other day. Actor Neil Patrick Harris revealed he did his first film with Whoopi Goldberg, and then he said this. Listen closely. 
You know, I did my first movie ever with uh, with Whoopi Goldberg, a movie called Clara's Heart, oh, and we worked heart. together on that. Yeah. And she told me. But yeah. She told me. I was, what, 15, 16 years old. Mm -hmm. She told me on my last day of shooting that 10 years, in 10 years' time, she was going to have sex with me. <laughs> I might have. In those days, you could actually have some fun like that. You can't do that now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, get yeah. very I was not offended. Now. I'm looking forward to it. Have some fun like that. Imagine. Imagine if a young female actress got up and said some Academy Award winning director had told her when she was 15 that he was, would have sex with her in a few years. The view would be asking for that right. guy's head right and promising he'd never work again. But there apparently is one rule book for Hollywood and one rule book for everybody else. Well, it's just like everyone was kind of like. Hold she... on. Cat oh. got her tongue for a few seconds. I, I there, didn't though. notice that. I All didn't right. notice that. And James Gunn, you remember we did this story several weeks ago in July. James Gunn was the director of uh, the Marvel, the big Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy. They ended up slicing his contract, canceling his involvement, and they moved him to DC Comics now. He's directing the Suicide Squad. This